in the bad old days, when India was full of millionaire Maharajas, these fellows used to bump off their wives with astonishing frequency. Oddly, they all used the same method, and very royal and Maharaja-ish it was. Not for them a coarse bash on the head or a bloody running through with a sword or a slashing of the throat. They used tiger's whiskers. A Maharaja intent upon disposing of his wife would first go out and shoot a tiger. He would then cut off its whiskers. These whiskers, which were as sharp and spiky as slivers of glass, would be chopped up into small pieces and sprinkled on the Maharani's curry at dinner. When eaten, they would perforate the lining of her intestine and kill her off within two days. In other countries, tiger's whiskers are rather hard to come by, so we husbands have to use other, less refined methods, as you will see in a moment. Isn't it time you settled your account? I came prepared. When this started, you had a sob story about helping some young drug addict. Red tape about overprescribing. That young addict doesn't seem to be responding to your treatment. I'll tell you the truth, John. We doctors are sorely tempted. You've only to look at our suicide rate. I got hooked on the stuff myself. That's what I thought, all along. I take risks for you, and I pay for them. It's been simple to oblige you so far, but one day someone's going to count the tablets they get in a bottle. Most of the people on these are too confused, disturbed to count. And I suppose my little contribution helps with your... Uh, with my... Inflation must have made adultery impossibly expensive. How's your wife? Eleven stone and twelve pounds. I know exactly, because the Slimming Clinic gives her a little card. She has a weight loss to target. But as she's always going up instead of down, she hides it. But I know where.
And George simply won't know. Well, suppose George finds out. If he finds out, I'll be glad. Yes, glad. And Phyllis? What about Phyllis? Phyllis will be so busy thinking about herself, oh, she no, won't have to... No, 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 no. Derek, dear boy, you're giving me absolutely nothing. Phyllis, Phyllis, let's try to be sensible about all this. We have to think of the children. But Phyllis doesn't... How's the pig? Shh. Women are awful. You're awful. Men have some kind of loyalty, but women... Mary was your best friend, and you call her the pig. It's good for us she still thinks I am her best friend. What do you call her? In your mind. The fat pig. The fat, fat, fat pig. When they weigh her, they must need a crane. A strap round her belly like when they weigh sows. Oh, that's it. Could we have a little quiet up there, please? There. Where have they got? They're still on Act One. <laughs> it's obvious by the shape of it that it is a whistle. In fact, if I put it in the mouth and blow, you'll hear it will blow. And it has a slide up and down like this, instead of one that would presume that. Um, the whistle would vary when you did that, but it doesn't because the whistle part of it finishes there. And then on the side of it, it has a funny little proger here, which when you push it down, the point comes through the bottom end. I can't wait, John. Not any longer. Well, the way the old sow's stuffing herself now. She'll eat herself to death. Her heart won't take it. I can't wait for her heart. What about my heart? I love you, Francis. If you loved me, you'd get a divorce. I have an idea. Supposing you told her I was stepping out of line, perhaps with one of the girls in the show, and sound her out, half like a joke, say, would you ever divorce him? Act two, please, act two. Come on, John. All right, Damien. We're coming. Never. But suppose, oh, it's probably not serious, just a last fling, but suppose he just walked out on you, ran off with her. Who is she? Oh, I've no idea. It's just gossip. He's been seen with someone. He wouldn't leave me. John couldn't. He isn't the type. But if he did, he'd be sorry. I can tell you that. You must have seen enough divorce cases go through your office. I'd see that he paid. I'd get every last penny the court would give me. By the time I'd finished with them, him and his little tramp, whoever she is, they'd be sorry they started. Asked you not to use my razor for that, it clogs the head. Well, buy me one of my own then. You sell them. You bring me that bar I should Yes. Don't look at me like that. These are non fattening. Low calorie glucose. You compulsive eaters are worse than alcoholics. You always an excuse. I'm not a compulsive eater. I've got a problem with my metabolism. <laughs> well, how was the rehearsal? Uh, pretty good. We've locked out half act two. Who are the girls in the company? Well, apart from Francis, uh, 
That's that blonde from the gas board. She was in Rookery Nook. And uh, the brunette, who was in French Without Tears. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a mousy little thing. Well, she's just a walk-on. She uh, works in the public library. It's the mousy little thing I'd wonder about. What? Well, if you were straying, John, the one you'd run down is the one I'd suspect. <laughs> John, do you love me? Of course I do. You never say so. Well, after ten years, it gets forgotten. Do you know what I'd really love you for? What? If you heard me my lines before we went to sleep. Act two. It's a devil to learn. What's between us is real. You can't say it isn't. I never said it wasn't real. I said it was dangerous. Dangerous for who? Dangerous for you. For you. It's not a very good play, is it? <laughs> These things are best discussed over a good dinner. Oh, I agree. Preferably on a banquet with a very good wine. Soho. Or we could go slumming at the Ritz. <laughs> Jolly good. Absolutely splendid. Now, can we have Derek and Annie, please? Act two, scene one. Well, in that case, divorce is out. I've still a bank loan for redoing the shop. I'd go bust up. Have you thought that you and I are uniquely qualified for one way out? I work for a solicitor, so I know the law. You're a pharmacist, so you know. Know what? All about sickness and death. Thanks. I found a harmless little pill that looks exactly like those, so I slip half a dozen into each prescription. And I've not had one complaint. For some conditions, you can prescribe pills made of chalk and sugar, and 40% of your patients say it makes them feel better. How's your practice? Could be brisker. Not full up, then? Wish I was. I'm worried about Mary. The hospital's told her if she doesn't lose weight, she'll kick the bucket. Strain on the heart. I got her to go to a slimming clinic. Now she's packed it in. Our doctor's Gregson. Oh, Gregson. He can't make her listen. He doesn't seem to care. I was wondering if we might transfer to you as our dear old family doctor, counsellor and friend. Oh, of course. You'll have to tell Gregson. Well, Mary doesn't seem to respond to him. I'd put it frankly, a change of doctor might bring a change of heart. All you have to do is fill in page three of your medical card. Isn't there some affinity between uh, compulsive eaters and other addicts? You might understand her, identify, help her more than a teetotal square like Gregson. Do you want some favour of me, John? I might. Clever getting Dr. Applegate. You're sure he's hooked? Line and sinker. And hard line. I could get him struck off the register. Ruin him. We have to wait just a bit longer. A medical practitioner may not issue a certificate unless he's been in attendance upon the deceased during his or her last illness. I looked it up today. Gaslight would be the best for you. I may not be here, John. What? I can't take this any longer. Being the other woman. I've got an open date return. I loathe my sister. I loathe her husband. But Philadelphia's packed with the lawyers. I might stay on and look for a job. 
English secretaries are a status symbol there. I could double my money. And perhaps find someone. Francis. I've had it, John. All this hole and corner stuff. I've had it. My flight's at 12.50, so I have to be up at the crack. I called in on Mary to say goodbye. The Bates were there. I gave a very good impression of Mary's oldest friend. I thought it might help. Help with what? Help with what you've got to do, John. If you want me... I kill pigs every day by the thousand. Haven't you got the nerve to get rid of just one? I've thought of everything. Drive the car in the river. Get out myself. It has to be something that doesn't need an inquest. Something that Dr. Applegate can certify as natural causes. There is one way. At last. How? It's better you don't know. Send me a telegram. Regret, inform you. I'll be back. But not unless. I'll do it, Francis. I promise. I love you. Oh, I love you. But only if... Barley sugars. Uh, I knew you'd mind, so I brought you these. Mm. <laughs> Must be a thousand calories in those. What about the marron glacé? Oh, Bates brought them. Um, Francis came round to say goodbye. Some people come, eat you out of house and home, never bring a thing. At least the Bates always bring something, even if it's only flowers from the garden. Oh, and Dr. Applegate called. I don't know why. Most of them won't visit nowadays unless you're on your last legs. Oh, the money, perhaps. I think they get more for a home visit. Well, why did you change from Dr. Gregson to Dr. Applegate? Oh, I didn't think Gregson was helping you with your problem. I don't have a problem. I've got a metabolic condition. And Dr. Applegate gave me a long lecture. Oh, he's very sympathetic. I rather like Dr. Applegate, actually. I think I'll save the chocolates till tomorrow. The story of the men who gambled with the future of the world is told in a major event presentation. We want some supper. Saturday night at 9 15. Good night, Mr. Badge. Good night, Mavis.
Oh, hello, Johnny. What are you doing? <sighs> I've got... I, I think I've got a stone. <sighs> Didn't bring me my barley sugar, did you? Um, uh, I'm so sorry. There's something wrong with deliveries. We're still out of stock. <gasps> Good, I'm glad. It was Dr. Applegate helped me to see. See what? This eating. It's all a matter of, of will. Oh, I know there's the metabolic, um, what did he call it? The, the metabolic idiosyncrasy too. But in the end, it all comes down to will, to wanting to be slim. Now, I've never been a religious person, but now I know what they mean by conversion. I've been converted, Johnny. I've seen the light. I'm going back to the clinic. Uh, they've set me a target. Uh, yes, um, I'm going to lose three pounds every week. I'm going to do it. Not just for me, but for you. That's the important thing. I've, I've thrown away all that muck, all the biscuits and marron glacé and cakes. So that box of chocolates I brought you uh, was a waste of money? It's not a waste. I gave it to Frances. Frances? But she's gone. There was a strike at London Airport. Her flight's been delayed till this afternoon. So I gave her the chocks to take on the trip. I bet she's guzzling those soft centres now over the Atlantic. And I don't feel a trace of envy, not a trace. Going to make you a wonderful supper. Uh, we're going to have uh, grated carrot and lettuce and cottage cheese. I'll be as thin as a rake, Johnny. And you'll love me. You'll tell me you love me.